for the prelude this morning, we are going to learn one of the songs that we're going to sing in worship, so um, later in worship. So if you will take out the insert in your bulletin, one side has information about Bible school, and the other side has a song called Sing Hallelujah. And um, so we're going to teach you the chorus, especially, then let you hear the verse, so you'll sing it with us later, but we're going to learn that chorus. So Isaiah's going to play it for us. Hallelujah, Lord, we sing hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord, we sing hallelujah, singing hallelujah, 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 singing. to sing it later. <clears throat> Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing for joy. You are our God, and we will lift you high. Sharing all the grace that we receive each day. part that you know. Our choir members out there, I know y'all are hearing harmonies. You go right ahead and add them. Sing them as loud as you can when we get to it. All right. <laughs> Good job. <clears throat> well, grace and peace to all of you this morning. It is good to gather with you in God's house for worship. And today we are celebrating Food Justice Sunday. So we're going to hear a lot more about that as we go. But before we enter worship, let's um, hear a few of the things happening in the life of our church. First of all, what a joyful Saturday we had <laughs> yesterday. We had incredible music from Charlotte Symphony artists in here um, yesterday afternoon. It was just beautiful. So if you missed it, hopefully we'll have some more. We're, we're working on some more grants to get some of those, but it was gorgeous. So glory to God for that. And then in the evening, we had a fundraiser for um, our food ministry with the community. It was a hot dog supper. We had a magician with card tricks. I mean, it was awesome. We had a great turnout, and we raised enough money at that dinner to cover one month of our markets. So that is awesome. <laughs> It was wonderful. So thanks to everybody who made those things happen. I know it was a lot of work. Um, today, <clears throat> well, actually first, next Sunday, I want to tell you about next Sunday. I will be away with my family on vacation, but there is a wonderful worship service planned that you do not want to miss. Um, it is 4th of July weekend, and so one of the things that we're going to be thinking about in that service of worship is what are the spiritual voices? Who are the voices through our history of our nation that have influenced and, and made us who we are? And where have we seen God's work active and moving 
you know, woven through the history and the life of our nation. And it's going to be led by congregation members, and so it's going to be wonderful. Think lessons and carols, but God in America, all right? So <laughs> come and hear those readings and sing the songs, and you will um, not want to miss that. So um, please do that and invite a friend. It's going to be lovely. All right, today um, we are, it is Food Justice Sunday, and we're going to be doing a special offering for our food justice ministry. This is a special offering to give and to support that ministry as, as Amity and as the community um, to continue that Wednesday food ministry, Amity food pantry, all of those. So we are taking a special offering for that. Also, because it's the last Sunday of the month, you'll see in your bulletin um, the envelope for 10 cents a meal. So these are two separate offerings, so please don't get them confused. But please give to both, because they both are food justice ministries. Ten Cents a Meal is through the Presbytery and serves other food-based agencies, hunger-based agencies, um, and works with at-risk youth in our Presbytery. So please give to both, but just take note, they are two separate offerings. <laughs> You'll find some information about Bible School um, in there as well. Um, please invite, you know, grandkids if you've got them that are elementary school age that could come to this. Um, and there's information on the website for how to sign up so that we know who is coming. Um, and we hope that we'll have a wonderful crowd. I already know that we will. So if you want to help, please um, let me know or let, while I'm gone, who else would like to? <laughs> Isaiah, you can let Isaiah know. That would be great. Isaiah's leaving, uh, leading music. So please um, Julie's volunteering as well. Anne is. We've got Carol. So please, sign up, serve food in the kitchen, help with an art class, whatever it is. Shake some maracas. <laughs> we need you. All right. Ah, friends. Whew. <laughs> There's a lot happening, which is a good thing. It's good and beautiful. So let's turn our hearts and minds to God as the 11 o'clock hour is chimed. <laughs> Let us pray. Loving God, gather us together this morning so that we may remind each other of your intent for this earth and for all your children who live in it. Gather us so that we may pour out our lives in Christ's name as Christ does on behalf of those who hunger for hope, for justice, for daily bread, so that it will be on earth as it is in heaven for now and for always. Amen. Amen. Friends, I invite you to rise as we call one another to worship this morning. Your line in this, as you will see in the bulletin, is taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> so I will offer some words, and then I will go like this, and it is your turn to say, taste and see that the Lord is good. So friends, let us be called to worship. On this Food Justice Sunday, God invites us to the dinner table and calls us to be peacemakers. Taste, taste and, and see, see that the, that the Lord, Lord is, is good. good. God works for justice among the nations, for wholeness in creation, and for reconciliation among individuals. And God invites us to join in this work of seeking peace through growing, distributing, and eating food. Taste, Taste and see that the, that the Lord, Lord is good. good. Through the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ, the bread of life, God gives us a taste of what the kingdom is all about. And we get to join in that kingdom work. 
Taste, Taste and see that the, that the Lord is good. Church, through loving, worshiping, giving, and serving, we get to taste, taste and, and see, see that, that the Lord, Lord is, is good. good. Let's sing our praise to God with hymn number 434. Today we are called to be disciples. Today we all are Please be seated. Beloveds, we come to the baptismal font together as in worship each week to offer to God our confession. Not just a list of wrongs, but to offer God what is broken in our lives, what breaks our hearts, the things that are true about this world that we know are not the way that they should be. And we offer God the truth about our place in those. So as we come to this prayer of confession, we think together and pray together about systems of food and hunger and how we are connected in all of those things, and how our choices affect the lives of others as well. So I invite you. First, we will sing to begin our prayer, and then we will pray together the prayer of confession in your bulletin. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, dwell. Fill your church with joy overflowing and peace overflowing and love overflowing in all of your glory. Come. Together, let us make our confession. 
Lord Jesus, Jesus we, confess we confess how we how assume, we assume some, some people are not, are not worthy, worthy to receive our crumbs, that, that we eat, we eat and, drink and drink in casual, in casual ease, while others, others hunger, hunger and thirst, and thirst. That, that we, we have, have been careless, careless with, with our food, food wasting, wasting precious, precious resources, resources that, that others, others need. need. And perpetuating, and perpetuating cycles, cycles that, that steal and destroy. And destroy. Help, us Help us to hear and learn from the from excluded, excluded, marginalized, and hungry. And hungry. Help, Help us, us to see clearly and compassionately. Help us to learn humbly and act faithfully that one day we might, we might join, join the joyous feast at your, at your table, table, from, from which, which no one is excluded. In hearing, hearing our, our confessions, Lord, heal, heal us. us. Amen. Friends, let these baptismal waters remind you that you were made in the image of God. And that when God made you, God, the one who fashioned the universe, who transcends time and space and who knew all of our days and all the days of humanity before humanity was made. That God looks at humankind and calls us good. You are loved. You are a child of God. You are forgiven. You are given the power to live differently and to share that forgiveness, that love, and that welcome with everyone that you meet. Friends, through Jesus Christ, we can live differently as forgiven people. So let's speak together what is true about God and what is true about us and God's grace. Friends, hear and believe the good news of the gospel. In, In Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, we are forgiven. forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Let's sing Jesus Loves Me as any children here this morning, come forward to the front. You want to come, Jean? Yeah. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Good morning. I'm so glad to see you. I'm so glad you decided to join us down here, Kaisa. It is good to see you. Well, I want, I'm really glad that you guys are here because I was afraid I was not going to be able to share the story behind why I wore my best dress today. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think these are my, this is my best dress? Am I fancy? I feel fancy. I've got this fancy thing on, yeah, that I wear when, when I lead worship. This is called a stole. It's colorful. Reminds us of God's beauty. Now, I think I am wearing the best thing that I could wear for what we're talking about today. 
I'm wearing overalls. And overalls, are they comfy? You have some overalls? You should get some. Who do you see wear overalls sometimes? Like when you're reading your picture books, your story books. Who wears overalls? Maybe a big hat and some boots. <gasps> what? Nope. Good guess, though. Put some boots. That's a good guess. He does wear boots. Does he wear overalls? I don't know if he wears overalls. He does wear a big hat, though, right? Yeah, that's a good guess. I'm thinking of farmers and gardeners, right? Yeah, yeah, right? People who work in the dirt, right? Which is kind of fun. Do you like to play in the dirt? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> uh-huh. Especially when you're at the beach. I'm going to the beach next week and I'm really excited. Yeah. I can't wait to play in the sand. That's my favorite thing is to dig big holes in the sand and sit in them. <laughs> I know that's silly, but it is my favorite. Mm hmm. And yeah, sand castles. But farmers and gardeners are people that dig up the dirt and they play in the dirt and they work in the dirt so that they can grow things. What kind of things do farmers and gardeners grow? Plant, yeah, plants, mm-hmm. And veggies, yeah. Plants and veggies, right? And some sometimes fruit and yeah, all kinds of things. You love fruit, me too. They grow things, <laughs> yes. They grow things that are beautiful. Sometimes they grow flowers and plants that are beautiful. And they grow things that we can eat right? And that animals can eat. Yeah. Look, hey, you, you guys want to come up here? Look up here. You can come up here with me. I brought some things. Now, I have a garden at home, and I am learning to be a gardener, as you can probably see, because my overalls are clean, <laughs> right? I'm just learning how to grow things, right? But I've grown, I have, I brought these from home. That's lavender. Can you come, you can touch this. Here, come touch this. And then, yeah, can you touch it? Can you reach it, Kaisa? Now smell your hands. Do they smell good? Yeah, that smells so good. Lavender. Yeah, it smells like perfume. Yeah, that's one thing I'm growing. And then I brought some other things to show you. I have two Two different things, okay? The first thing is this. What is this? An orange. I did not grow this orange. I do not have an orange tree. <laughs> I do not. I would love an orange tree, but I don't think orange trees grow around here. So that came from the grocery store. Now, these. This is all that I have grown so far in my garden this whole year. I have three little peppers. <laughs> Little tiny peppers. They are cute. I know. They're so cute. I don't want to eat them because they're so cute. But they're spicy peppers. They are spicy peppers. And you know, these, this orange and these peppers tell a story. Do you know that? That they have a story to tell? These peppers came from a plant that's in a big pot in my garden. And it came from my friend's Alan and Julie, they brought me that plant. And this, these little peppers and some of their friends have grown nicely on that pepper plant. And they sit there in the sun. And they're surrounded by all kinds of other nice veggies that are almost growing. And I go check on them every day. And when they're ready, I'll get to eat them and enjoy them. And they will fill up my tummy and make my food taste good. And I can share them with friends. You don't have to enjoy spicy things. That's okay. Not everybody does. There's some peppers that aren't spicy. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Well, so, so these little peppers, they have lived a happy life. I have enjoyed getting to know them, and I'm going to enjoy eating them too. Now, this orange came from another country. Mm-hmm. A lot of our food comes from another country, right? And sometimes that food comes from little gardens and little farms. But sometimes the food that comes from other places around the world comes, hold on, let me finish my story, and then you can ask your question, okay? Sometimes it comes from big, giant farms or big, giant orchards, 
but that's a bunch of trees, fruit trees, that grow food, like tons and tons and tons of food. And sometimes the people that work there, it's a hard place to work, right? The people that care for these, they don't, maybe sometimes they don't get paid enough, right, to be able to have what they need. And they work really, really hard. And then the fruit, like this orange, travels thousands of miles on boats or trains in boxes. And it comes all the way here. And then it goes to the grocery store. And it sits on shelves until somebody buys it. And then it goes home. And then hopefully we eat it before it goes bad in the, in the refrigerator, right? What about those two stories? Are those different kinds of stories between the peppers and the orange? What do you think about those stories? I love it. I love it. Um, some maybes are yes and some maybes are no. That's a good answer, June. Um, yeah. Those are two different stories. Sometimes when we eat food that we can grow here or that's grown by somebody that we know, it can be happier food. And it tastes better sometimes. But sometimes when we eat food from far, far away, too, it has stories that are, that are harder to tell. But it's good to know the stories of the food that we eat. And we're going to do that some today. And part of what we do is we give food as the church. We give food to hungry people. And we try to help folks have healthy, yummy food. Yes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, sometimes that means we get to try food that we wouldn't be able to grow here. You're right. From around the world. That's right. And that's a good thing. But we should always think about where our food comes from and learn about the people who grow it. That's how that we can be kind to people who, who grow the food that we eat, okay? And as you get bigger, you're going to learn more about that. Do you ever grow food? Do you have a garden? Does your grandma have a garden? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I hope that you guys will help grow that food. Hey, let's say a prayer. Will you say a prayer with me? You want to repeat after me? Okay. Dear God, thank you for our food. Help us to always look for people who are hungry. Help us feed them. Amen. All right. You guys can go back to the playground if you like or back to your pew with your family. <laughs> Thanks for coming up here. Keep listening, though, okay? <laughs> The gospel reading for today is Matthew, ver Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. Listen to these words of Jesus to his disciples and to us today. Then, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forget us, give us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Mm. Friends, as we contemplate what it means to be a congregation committed to food justice, it's only fitting to examine what the Bible says about food and about eating. We just heard the words from Jesus' prayer where he teaches us to ask God for our daily bread. So now let's turn back to one of the earliest stories of God's people in Scripture, the origin story, if you will, of, of our spiritual ancestors, the Israelites, who will come to be known as the Jewish people, and we'll see the foundational story of this prayer for daily bread. 
And we enter this story with our scripture today just after God has used Moses to rescue the people from slavery in Egypt. And they've escaped to safety through the parted waters of the Red Sea. And they're counting on God's word that Moses would lead them into their promised land. A land full of abundant life, flowing with milk and honey and all that they would ever need. But to get there, God and Moses are leading them through the desert wilderness. And as far as they can tell, there's no milk or no honey in the wilderness. So let's hear God's word as it comes to us from Exodus chapter 16, verses 1 through 21. The whole Israelite community set out from Elam and came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they had come out of Egypt. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and we ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening, you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. And in the morning, you will see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said, You will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses told Aaron, Say to the entire Israelite community, Come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread, and then you will know that I am the Lord your God. And that evening quail came. And covered the camp. And in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. And when the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It's the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. Well, the Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much and some gathered little. And when they measured it by the omer, the one who gathered much did not have too much. And the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. Then Moses said to them, no one is to keep any of it until the morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots, and it began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. Each morning, everyone gathered as much as they needed, and when the sun grew hot, it melted away. Church, this is the word of God, and it is for us, the people of God. Give us this day our daily bread. We pray these words at least every Sunday. Jesus instructed us to pray with these words. And Christians all over the world and since the earliest days of the earliest Christian communities, believers have prayed this prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. 
We ask this of God, but do we really know the meaning of those words? Do we know what it really means to ask God for our daily bread? I'm willing to bet that some of you in this room do. For those of us, myself included, who have never experienced a day in our lives where food wasn't readily available and easy to find, this prayer, it can feel more like a platitude than a genuine request. I mean, how can we really grasp the notion of relying on God to provide our food each day when we can go to our cupboards and our fridge and, and find enough food for weeks and months at a time? I don't have to trust God daily because I can trust Food Lion, right? Or Harris Teeter or McDonald's or Portofino's. I, I, they're always going to have food when I need it. Or really... Maybe what that means is I don't have to trust God to meet my physical need for food because I can provide for myself. For most of us who are lucky enough to never really wonder where our next meal is going to come from, daily bread, it becomes this metaphor, right? For all the ways that God nourishes us, body, mind, spirit. But church, make no mistake. When Jesus tells us and tells his disciples to ask God, give us today our daily bread, he is talking about actual physical food. It's not a metaphor. It's the prayer of hungry people. It's an instruction to believers to remember that every meal that they have is a gift from God and that God created this beautiful earth to provide all that we will need if only we would trust that there is enough for everyone. This is what the Lord is teaching the Israelites in the wilderness. I will provide enough for you, not just to keep you alive, but enough for you to be full and satisfied and enough for your neighbor to be full and satisfied but but you should only gather what you need for each day instead of trying to store up extra trust me the lord says to provide for you and your neighbor that's a hard lesson to learn church and here's the thing those of us who haven't known what it's like to be hungry, we often look at those who do and we think, gosh, it must be so hard to trust God to provide your daily bread when you go to bed at night and you don't know where tomorrow's food will come from. That must be so hard. And yes, I'm certain it is hard. But people who have experienced that, they get trusting God to provide for them. They get it because they have to, because their neighbor has failed them, because we participate in systems of food production and, and wealth that make it so in order for some to be comfortable and fed, others must be left hungry and poor. It's the folks like you and me who have the ability to store up so much extra that it spoils before we can eat it. It's folks like us. We're the ones who have trouble trusting God for our daily bread. We've convinced ourselves that we don't need to, haven't we? That, that things are working out just fine because our bellies are full. But as Christians, shouldn't we be asking ourselves some bigger questions? What does it mean that we live in such a way that we never go physically hungry, but the person who picks the tomatoes that spoil in the bottom drawer of our fridge cannot afford to buy those tomatoes with the wages that they make as a field laborer? Don't we owe it to all the children of God 
to at least take the time to learn and to try to understand our part in all of this. Because living this way, it spoils more than just food. It spoils lives and relationships and childhoods and dreams and communities and God's creation. It delays and it obscures the kingdom of God around us. And we pray that prayer each week too, don't we? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we live in a system that's accepted hunger as a necessary evil, all of us are harmed when we resign ourselves to it. Those with empty bellies and those with too much to eat. It's just that some of us are comfortable enough not to have to know how it hurts us too. The truth is that food matters. It matters to every human being on this earth, and it matters to God. It matters where it comes from, how it's grown, who does the growing, they matter. How it gets from there to our tables matters. Who gets to eat and who doesn't, that matters. What they get to eat matters. It always has, right from the beginning. Genesis makes it clear that God is the one who creates the world and then sustains that life with the gift of food. The story that we heard of manna in the wilderness, it speaks of God's vision of peace and security for all people. The prophets, they use food and agricultural imagery to talk about God's call to work for justice. Jesus referred to himself as the bread of life, and he called his followers to join with him in making the kingdom of justice and peace be realized on earth as it is in heaven. The Bible speaks, it speaks about food as a gift from God, food as a sign of justice and of discipleship, as something that includes bringing healing and hope to our world, and certainly that includes our food systems. Food matters to God, and so it should matter to us. So when you all heard God's call on Amity last year to respond to issues of food insecurity and hunger, that came through the Holy Spirit from you all in that vision process. That is what you heard. It was more than just a call to feed the hungry on any given day. It was a call to work toward food justice. These are different things. Food justice is bigger it's deeper, it's broader. Yes, it begins with feeding those we learn are hungry. But it can't stop there, church. Because if nothing else changes, there will always be another hungry person, another empty belly the next day. Being committed to food justice means feeding the hungry and then asking ourselves honestly, why are there hungry people? Who is it that doesn't have reliable access to food? What kind of food are they getting when they do? And, and what kind of food do they want? What's my role in all of this? And what can I do to make lasting change? What's our role in all of this? And what can we do? to prevent hunger before it begins? Those are gospel questions, church. Faithful responses to a call from the Holy Spirit. So I want to show you a quick video of a Charlotte News report about something called food deserts. And this report is from January of 2020. So you can imagine that over the course of the last two years of the pandemic, that the situation has intensified for many people in our city. So let's watch. 
for granted. A quick trip to the grocery store right around the corner, but it's not so easy for some of our neighbors. We learned today almost 15% of people living in Mecklenburg County don't know where their next meal is coming from. A major part of the problem, food deserts. All the colorful dots on this map show where the grocery stores are located in the county. Those big empty pockets of green have no grocery stores at all. Tonight, county leaders are trying to figure out how to fix that. WCNC Charlotte's Hunter Signs has the story all new at 6. Sarah and Fred, the data is troubling. The number of people in Mecklenburg County who live in a food desert is above the national average, and now county leaders are promising change. All I ask you to do is to help my people to come out of the desert. An emotional plea from Commissioner Vil Malik demanding leaders act to help feed those living in food deserts. I beg you to help us so that we can live too and have long future. County health officials classifying these zip codes as food deserts, lacking access to grocery stores for those who live there. It would be good to have one in this area right now. We know we have an issue. County Health Director Gibby Harris says the cost of healthy food is also an issue leading to more problems. Poor diets contribute to poor health. The county has a number of programs that are trying to put food on the table, but say more needs to be done. We have people that are starving. They can't eat. And we can only go back to the people and say what we can't do. Options include more farmers markets and food deserts and more education on healthy options. The time is now. People are starving. People are hungry and it's affecting their health, their life. Communities starving for a solution and county leaders demanding one. The county now plans to meet with executives of grocery store chains to see what needs to be done to get them to move into those food deserts. But this is certainly a priority for the board. I'm Hunter Signs for WCNC Charlotte. Those words help my people come out of the desert. For those of us with easy access to cars and gas money, a food desert in the middle of a big city like this, it's a hard thing to imagine. But a food desert, it's a location where the majority of people living there do not have easy, close, reachable access to a grocery store where they can buy fresh, healthy food. Most of us can jump in the car, right? And we probably drive past some grocery stores that we don't really like to go to the one that we do to get the things that we prefer, we buy a cart full of food or even just run in and grab a couple things and that we need in the moment and then we drive home. We could do it in 30 minutes, maybe an hour if it's a big shopping. But imagine just for a minute that, that you don't have a car or even a family member or a friend with one that can take you. There are lots of people that live with that situation. You rely on your own two feet if you are healthy enough to do that, or you rely on public transportation. Well, for many who live in food deserts, the nearest true grocery store is several miles away. There's no direct route there on the city bus, so you have to wait for one to take you downtown to the bus depot. You have to transfer, transfer buses and then get on that one that gets you the closest to the grocery store. You do your shopping, making sure not to buy more than you can manage to carry or fit in the little cart that you've brought with you. And then you do the whole trip in reverse to get home, and you hope that your milk doesn't spoil or your ice cream doesn't melt before you get there. What might take me an hour takes you now about five hours from start to finish. Not to mention the $6 or so that you spend on bus fare and the majority of your one afternoon off of work. Hopefully you could find a friend to watch your kids so that you didn't have to take them with you on that five hour grocery store trip or pay for a sitter. What is simple and accessible for one person is not so for another. Just getting to the grocery store can be an incredibly challenging thing when there isn't one near you. But there are tons of convenience stores in food deserts. You can get a half a gallon of milk at those and, and you can buy all the processed snack food that you want. 
It'll fill hungry bellies when your kids are asking you for food, but it will harm hungry bodies. So when we ask the question, why doesn't someone have access to fresh, healthy food, we begin to see more of these broken systems, don't we, church? It invites us deeper, right? Beyond the person that's standing right in front of us who needs food now. It invites us into examining things like inequity in transportation, how our cities and neighborhoods are designed and zoned, child care struggles, livable wages. It's all connected. And so committing to food justice means being willing to see those systems that harm people and that contribute to hunger. And when we begin to see them, we respond. And I don't know if you caught the list of those five zip codes in that video. It was quick. But the five zip codes that are considered food deserts in Charlotte, two of those zip codes are 28205. That's this one. It starts here before the church is and goes that way. And then there was 28212. That starts just across Sharon Amity Road and goes that way. Church, Amity, Amity Presbyterian Church stands at the intersection of two designated food deserts in Charlotte. When you all heard the call from God to respond to food insecurity and hunger when COVID began, you were listening on behalf of our neighbors. And you heard God loud and clear when we began our Wednesday food ministry with the bulb. In October of 2020, we helped address a problem we didn't even really understand yet. That's how the Holy Spirit works. <laughs> it's beautiful to see. Because of our market, households in our neighborhood can come and get free, fresh, healthy food right in their own neighborhood. Food that costs a lot at the grocery store. Food that isn't available at convenience stores or the Dollar General. Food that is good for people. Food that comes from local farms and stores and, and urban gardens. Food that provides local people with income and fights food insecurity and poor nutrition one household at a time. Just look at these numbers from January to May of this year for our market. This doesn't include last year or when we started in 2020. Total households served at our markets, 562. That's in five months. Unique households, so we get lots of repeat, repeat families that come through, 186 different households have come to count on fresh, healthy food at Amity's Market. That's, that's just the number of people that come. Those households represent 2,145 people. That's just in the first five months. That's amazing, church. Two-thirds of our folks are return visitors. They've come to depend on it. And then one-third is new each week. And look at this number, y'all. I'm excited about this. This is amazing. The number of pounds, if you can't see it, of fresh, healthy food that we have given out just this year is 6,211 pounds of food. That doesn't count the, the um, stuff that we supplement, the cans and things that we supplement from our own pantry. This is just our partnership with the bulb. 6,211 pounds of food. Church, that is amazing. That is, gives glory to God. God is moving mightily in our community through your faithfulness and your generosity. We are meeting needs, meeting neighbors. And this corner of God's kingdom is a little bit healthier, a little more friendly, and a little more just because of it. And because God grows good things, church, we can trust that this is only the beginning of what God is doing here. And we can trust that when we give and care for our neighbors like this, even when it costs us more than we think we can spare, God provides enough for our daily bread and for theirs. So this morning, we are going to trust God. We are going to trust God and give to a special offering. 
that will go right toward the food justice ministry. What is given this morning here and online that's designated for the food ministry will go to feeding people in our neighborhood and supporting that ministry. It costs Amity $800 a month to sponsor our markets with the bulb, our partners who help us get that food. $800 a month. And since we began it in October of 2020, not one dollar has come from Amity's operating budget. It has all come from gifts from you, gifts from the community, from God's generosity through all kinds of channels. And so through this special offering, we hope to continue funding this ministry through the end of the year and well into the next because it's meeting needs and it is transforming this world. And that is something you can give joyously and generously to it. So as the music plays this morning, I'm looking for something. As the music plays this morning, I want to invite you to come forward. <clears throat> to come up and bring your offering into, place it into these hands here. And imagine that you are placing your offering, your gift for this ministry into God's hands. And while you're up here, that's what I'm looking for. While you're up here, whether, whether you're making a gift this morning, I want you to still come forward. Whether you're giving online, still come forward. And while you're here, take a sprig of rosemary. Rosemary is an ancient symbol of remembrance. So take this with you. Smell it. It smells so good. <laughs> and allow it to remind you that of God's faithfulness and of God's call on this community to answer the food justice needs in our neighborhood. And let it remind you to remember to pray for those who come through our market that we meet each week. And I'm going to begin the first offering. This is not from me. This is from a person who comes, who has been coming to our food, to our ministry on Wednesday to get food every week for a while now. And she comes by herself just to get food for her. She's always so grateful. And she came to our um, fundraiser yesterday. She came in and she paid for her meal and she handed me this envelope, and she said, my mom's estate was settled, and I wanted to give you guys money for this market. And she gave us money in this card. And what she gave us is enough to feed all of the families that come to our market in one week, all of them from one person who's been coming to receive. She has just covered the food for a whole week for the families in our neighborhood. So friends, let that inspire you and, and remind you of the good things that God is doing, stuff we don't even know, <laughs> that we can't even see, what God is growing here and doing through Amity Church. So friends, give as you feel led with joy and with generosity.
God of abundance, God who plants seeds and grows beautiful things, we give you thanks for the offering given today. All that we have comes from you, Lord, from your gifts of creation. You have given every good and perfect gift, and so we give it right back, Lord. We hope that you will accept these gifts as a sign of the offering of our lives. Through the power of your Spirit, may we live gratefully and faithfully, stewarding our food and our finances and our footprints on this earth into a reflection of your creating and sustaining love. Lord, we ask that you would bless these gifts, multiply them grow them into something we could not even begin to imagine. We know that you will, God, because you already have. So we have no reason to believe that you will stop now. Lord, do beautiful things. Surprise us with the needs that you will meet with the new things that will grow from these gifts. We ask your blessing on each person that comes through our market each week. We ask that you would be present in their lives and that they would know you. We ask that they would know what it feels like to have enough because their neighbor has shared and because you have provided. Lord, help us to know that feeling as well to not rely on ourselves, but to give it away so that we can learn to trust you as well. We thank you, God. We thank you. We thank you. We pray for all of those who are hungry this day, for all of those who don't have enough shelter, enough resources, enough care, compassion, enough justice. We offer the prayer with our Latin American siblings who pray, Lord, to those who are hungry, give bread. And to those who have bread, give a hunger for justice. Let us be those people, Lord. We come to you as your people, full of needs, and worries and, and celebrations full of people that we love and care about and that we want to offer their lives to you, Lord, their struggles to you. So in this moment, we do just that. Hear the prayers of your people as we speak them to you. Lord, help us to trust these loved ones with you. <laughs> help us to trust you with us, with ourselves. We know that you want good things. Help us to believe it and live like we believe it. Hear your people now as we pray the prayer that Jesus gave us to pray. 
our Father, Father who art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, name. thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is, is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we, as we forgive, forgive our debtors. debtors. And lead, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom and, the power, and the power and the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, you are invited to rise. As we sing together the song we learned at the beginning of worship, Sing Hallelujah. The lyrics are on your bulletin insert. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing for joy. You are that is in your bulletin. It is responsive. May we always be hungry for righteousness. To overcome injustice that brings about hunger. May we always be hungry for peace. To overcome insecurity, suffering, and displacement. May we always be hungry to share our resources and blessings. To ensure that every person in our community can live a full life. Let's sing that chorus one more time. Hallelujah, Lord, we sing hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord, we sing hallelujah. Sing it. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing it. church. <laughs> Amen. I like it. <laughs>